Welcome to the Infidelity Doctor channel. This is Dr. Talal Al Salim, and this is the Ask Dr. Talal segment, the place to ask me any questions you may have about affair prevention and affair recovery. Please remember, this is not a substitute for the individual and couples counseling that you should be seeking. This is merely a place for you to get some basic question answered and uh, get uh, some of my clinical insights about affair recovery and prevention. But before we get to the question of the day, please make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the most recent updates about future videos. So the question for today is as follow. I'm concerned about holiday triggers. How do I manage it? Well, uh, one thing we need to understand is that infidelity can cause the betrayed and unfaithful partner some PTSD symptoms. It is a very traumatic event, which means that there will be triggers, there will be flashbacks, and uh, it is important to understand just because you are experiencing triggers and flashback that uh, does not mean that you're not getting better. It just means that this is, you know, part of the healing process and how you manage those triggers and how you prepare for them is going to uh, dictate uh, the future frequency as well as the intensity of those triggers. And holiday uh, seasons are going to be a common uh, time for people to re-experience triggers and flashbacks as well as anniversaries. Uh, why? holidays can bring up more triggers. Well, a lot of times it's like, um, you know, the first Thanksgiving or the first Christmas uh, in, in which now I realize, you know, my relationship is broken. You know, every other Christmas and Thanksgiving before this, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to deal with uh, knowing that my partner was unfaithful. But now with this holiday, I'm recalling a time in which infidelity wasn't part of our life. So that's one common reason for um, uh, to have more triggers during the holiday times. But also there's a lot of pressure around the holiday. You know, you have uh, obligations of family dinners, travels. Uh, also, sometimes there is more drinking during the holiday seasons. You add all these factors together, you have a big recipe for a more increased number of triggers. So what is the best way to manage triggers? Uh, one, uh, this is for the unfaithful partner's ears. Uh, the unfaithful need to know that they need to be accepting of the fact that their infidelity uh, is causing triggers and that they need to be there for their partner to help them with those triggers. A lot of uh, times the unfaithful might be uh, getting annoyed at the betrayed of saying, well, you know, why are you having triggers? Or I thought we're past this. Or it's inconvenient uh, for me to be there when you're having the trigger. Well, guess what? It's inconvenient for the betrayed to be dealing with the trigger in the first place. So they don't want to deal with it. Uh, you cannot just shut it down. So the unfaithful need to be accepting that triggers will happen and need to be accepting that they need to be there for their partner, even if it's inconvenient. Uh, most importantly, it is important for the betrayed and uh, the unfaithful partner to come up with a game plan around the holiday in terms of if we're going to be having a family dinner or traveling someplace, we need to have an agreed upon plan um, of what to do if we are dealing with a trigger. Uh, what are some of the signs we're going to look for to know that my partner is having trigger body language? Are they checked out? Do they seem to be sad? And if so, you know, what, 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 what do you expect from me to do to help? Uh, should we go on a walk? Should we take a break? Uh, uh, from whatever festivities that we're taking so that we can actually go talk about what's going on and be there for one another during that time. Uh, that's what I recommend. And also it is important to say just because you have a trigger during an, a holiday event, it doesn't mean the event is ruined. You just need to take the time to actually process it, talk about it, and get back to your festivity. And it's important to, to make sure that you do this behind closed doors without the audience of everybody in the event that you're attending. Uh, it is also important, uh, you know, when people are dealing with triggers, there's a tendency for the betrayed to want to deal with the triggers by asking questions or about the story of the infidelity. Why did you do this? Tell me again, why did you do that? Or details about the affair narrative. Now remember, if you did that part correctly and you actually got a solid narrative of what happened and why it happened, uh, 
re-asking those questions during trigger is not really the best way to deal with that trigger. But a lot of times people don't really know what is needed to help uh, process this trigger. So the only thing they can think about is by asking questions about the story of the infidelity. So it is important for the unfaithful and betrayed to um, not rely on asking questions about the infidelity narrative as a way to deal with trigger. Uh, what needs to happen is for the betrayed to be able to identify what is needed from the unfaithful partner in the present time to help them deal with that trigger. And a lot of times it's going to be really more of an acknowledgement of what I did was wrong, a reassurance that I won't do this again, and you know, a reassurance that I'm gonna do everything in my power to help rebuild that trust that I have broken. Oftentimes this is what people need uh, when they are dealing with triggers. But again, I emphasize is that if you're the betrayed and having a trigger, you need to allow the unfaithful to be there for you in the present. Uh, so there's they got to be something they can do for you in this moment, uh, because really the, the, the damage that they caused in the past, they cannot unring that bell. So, you know, if they're showing up to be there for you during that moment uh, of dealing with the trigger, what do you want from them in the present that will help uh, help you process those intense feeling in a positive way? Uh, another thing to think about if you are the unfaithful partner, a lot of times the unfaithful want to shy away from dealing with the trigger because they feel if they, you know, try to talk about it and process it, it's going to make things worse. Well, it may be uncomfortable to deal with in the present, but I can guarantee you if you try to suppress it or not deal with it, it's, it's uh, uh, a guarantee that it's going to make things worse because, you know, those things happen for a reason. And the proper thing to do is to process them rather than suppress them and sweep them under the rug. So yes, it might be uncomfortable to be there in that moment of time because you worry about it uh, ruining whatever good time the two of you having that moment, but not talking about it, it's not gonna make it go away. So really the right thing to do is to deal with it, deal with it appropriately and put it behind you and get back to the event that two of you are attending. So hopefully that uh, answered the question for the day. Please feel free to um, leave your comments below about the answer you heard, as well as any questions that you'd like to see me answer in the future. Until then, be well, be safe, and embrace the possibility for a brighter future. Take care.